entrepreneur, know thy market well. This admonition should be fully embraced by the entrepreneur who wants to fully maximize his or her market. The more the entrepreneur knows about his or her relevant market, the more customers can be segmented and reached, products can be positioned, price can be set, brands can be promoted, and locations can be pinpointed. Good market research would allow the entrepreneur to make wiser decisions and more enriching ones. There are seven basic questions which the researcher must ask before undertaking any major market research. These seven basic questions are why, what, which, who, when, where, and how. The first question is the why question. The why question seeks to find out the purpose and objective of the market research. Is it to determine the size and potential of the market? Is it to determine the different market segments and how they behave? Is it to pinpoint the good location? Is it to determine the usage, attributes, and interests of the marketplace? The why question defines the objective of the research. The second question is the what question. What exactly is to be researched? What is the scope of the research? What should be included and what should be excluded? What are the terms of reference for the market research? In short, what is the depth and breadth of the market research? The breadth of the market research defines its coverage or how extensive the research will be. The depth of market research defines the level or degree of insight required, or how intensive the research will be. To illustrate the levels of depth which a market research project might pursue, an importer of trendy ladies' wear wanted to know the market profile in Metro Manila in order to properly locate the store. At the first level, he obtained data from the National Statistics Office on the population of the 13 cities of Metro Manila and isolated the information on women between the ages of 15 and 36 in the ABC income classes. This gave him the overall market potential in Metro Manila for ladies' wear. At the second level, he decided to visit the major malls in Metro Manila where most of the competing ladies' wear are sold. He secured data on traffic count in these malls and the drop-in rates of the traffic going inside the shops. He observed how many went inside and how many came out with shopping bags containing the purchased products. At the third level, he decided to do an in-depth interview of the stores selling the most ladies' wear to ask which styles and sizes were selling the most, which age group bought the most number, or how much were the dresses selling for? He also surveyed the women who bought trendy ladies' wear to inquire about the basis for choosing the dress, their purpose, their frequency of purchase, their budget for buying dresses, and their most preferred brands for ladies' wear. The third question is the which question. Which precise customer segment should be researched on? Which needs and wants of customers must be explored? Which detailed aspect of the market must be exploited? Let us take a case example on which segment of the poverty market to research on. A social market researcher wanted to establish the market feasibility of setting up microfinance institutions to serve the needs of the poor. However, she found out that there were different segments of the poor. There was the poorest of the poor, the borderline poor, and in between was the middle poor. They are classified according to income and ability to purchase the minimum basic needs. Likewise, it was also discovered 
that there were two types of poor families based on the sources of income. Those who derived income from taking on full-time or part-time jobs and those who relied on self-employment selling their products in roadside stalls or in streets otherwise known as the entrepreneurial poor. The microfinance institution had to decide which segment of the poor they wanted to lend money to. Was it the poorest of the poor for social purposes or the entrepreneurial poor for economic development purposes? The fourth question is the who question. Who should the market researcher research on? Who should be included in the research? Who should be invited in a focus group discussion? Who should be surveyed? Who should be observed? Who should be interviewed? All of these are about the who question. The fifth question is the when question. The when question is about time and timing. What should be the time frame of the research? Should it be a day, a week, months, years, or even decades? Here's a case example on the timeline of research on sugar prices. In a market research conducted by a sugar estate owner, he discovered that sugar prices followed the 7 to 8 year price cycle. When sugar prices went up, more sugar lands were opened up by the sugar farmers, thus increasing the production level. Eventually, the production level would exceed consumption levels, causing sugar prices to drop. Because of this observation, the sugar state owner held on to the sugar lands, which he was considering to sell. At the time, the world sugar prices was down to US 4 cents a pound. However, because of his study on the 30-year cycle, he knew that the 4 cents a pound was at its lowest. Prices did in fact climb to 15 cents a pound as was indicated by the trend analysis. The sixth question is the where question. Where should the market researcher research on? Where should the interviewees be interviewed? Where are the areas and geographic boundaries of the research? The seventh and final question is the most important question. It is the how question. How exactly must the research be conducted? It will define the design of the research. How exactly must the first six questions be answered. For illustration purposes, let us say that the market researcher wants to make the conclusion that there is sufficient market in the Makati Central Business District to warrant the establishment of a state-of-the-art fitness gym. This conclusion has to be supported by sub-conclusions on the different clientele who would most likely avail of the service. In order to make the sub-conclusions on the different clientele that would most likely patronize the gym, the market researcher would have to assert several sub-sub-conclusions for every sub-conclusion. The market research design might look like this. First, let's look at the final conclusion. There is a sufficient number of potential customers in the Makati Central Business District for a state-of-the-art fitness gym. This final conclusion is supported by four sub-conclusions. Number one, there are enough managers and executives in Makati interested in the fitness gym. Number two, there are enough middle to high income residents with ages ranging from 15 to 50 interested in the Makati CBD gym. Three, the existing fitness gym in Makati CBD cannot provide the potential market, the services demanded by the target market. 4. The new fitness gym has superior features that would get a good share of the existing market 
and entice new customers. Let us go back to the first sub-conclusion, that there are enough managers and executives in Makati interested in the fitness gym. This is supported by two sub-sub-conclusions. First, the Makati CBD has a potential market of ex-male and female managers and executives between the ages of 20 and 50 who can afford a gym fee of 1500 a month. Second, from the potential market, enough manpower and executives are very interested in a fitness gym. Let us go to the second sub-conclusion, that there are enough middle to high income residents with ages ranging from 15 to 50 interested in the Makati CBD gym. This sub-conclusion is supported by two sub-sub-conclusions. First, the neighboring mid to high income subdivisions in and around Makati have a potential market of X people who can afford a gym fee of 1,500 a month. From the potential market, a sufficient proportion is very interested in a fitness gym. Let us go to the third sub-conclusion, that the existing fitness gym in Makati CBD cannot provide the potential market the services demanded by the target market. Again, this is supported by two sub-sub-conclusions. First, existing gyms are always full and customers are waiting their turn during peak hours. Second, the customers are looking for services not provided in the existing gyms. Let us go to the fourth and final sub-conclusion, that the new fitness gym has superior features that would get a good share of the existing market and entice new customers. This sub-conclusion is supported by two sub-sub-conclusions. First, the new gym will have features, equipment, attendance, and facilities that will be considered superior by existing and potential markets. Second, there's a good probability that customers of existing gyms would switch to the new gym. The hierarchy of conclusion, sub-conclusions, and sub-sub-conclusions would allow us to answer the how question. It will allow us to design how exactly should we prove the final conclusion, how exactly should we prove the sub-conclusion, and how exactly should we prove the sub-sub-conclusions. Let us attempt to design the market research for the state-of-the-art gym in Makati. Let us go back to the first sub-conclusion that we earlier made. In order to prove the first sub-conclusion and its sub-sub-conclusions, the market researcher has the following alternative approaches. First, find out if the city government of Makati has done a study on how many people work in the Makati CBD. Of those who work there, how many are executives and managers? If this information is available, it will be a good starting point. If not, then the researcher has the harder task ahead of him. Second, obtain from the Makati city government the list of corporations and business establishments registered in the city. From the list, determine how many companies are in the medium to large scale enterprise category. Presumably, executives and managers earning a sufficiently large income can afford the fitness gym. However, owners of small businesses may also be a viable target. Having extracted the list of relevant business establishments, the researcher can attempt to interview the human resource managers of these firms. If not all of the HR managers could be interviewed, then the researcher should conduct a survey by randomly choosing respondents from the list. Information about the large and medium-scale establishments and owners of small firms can be obtained from the Securities and Exchange Commission or from publication on the top 7,000 corporations in the Philippines. Third, another approach would be to get a map of the Makati CBD and the buildings located within the district. The market research can choose a sufficiently large number of buildings which could be the focus of more intensive interview 
and survey process. Alternatively, the market researcher can design a survey process where the targeted respondents would be randomly chosen from the different buildings. A fourth approach would be to reach the respondents to the clubs and associations that they join in Makati. This would include the Makati Business Club and the various social civic organizations like the Rotary Club, JCs, and Lions, who hold their meetings in Makati. If there's a personal management association composed of Makati human resource managers, this would be a good starting point. If not, then the national organization can be tapped as the information funnel to extract the data on Makati. We have learned how to do market research by asking seven basic questions. Why? Which? What? Who? When? Where? And finally, how?